Hi, it's Dwyer. Keeping it free. Blogspot.com, GamblersAdvisory.com, both free sites. One's a financial blog, the other's a sports advisory uh, blog on betting. Today is March the 26th, 2020. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I was just out in um, lovely San Jose, California, uh, risking the coronavirus. Um, and uh, I ran into a friend and we were talking about the economy. And I just wanted to make a video so that uh, I have a little timestamp on what I thought in the moment as of March the 26th, 2020. Also, I'm hoping that friends who want to talk to me about my views on the economy can see them here online. Might be more convenient for everyone, right? So, let me just say this. It's one man's opinion. I believe everyone needs to think for themselves. I know that... Uh, the powers that be uh, reached an agreement in Congress, uh, in the Senate, for the release of trillions of dollars of economic stimulus, right? Obviously, today we had a record number of jobless claims. People are concerned. This coronavirus has people indoors. The economy is cratering. The restaurant sector, the entertainment sector, the airline sector, they're all in free fall. We don't know the full extent of the losses. We'll find out shortly when people start reporting, when life starts to return to normal, and we don't even know when that's going to be. Some of the coronavirus numbers at first glance look like it's more serious than the flu from countries like Spain, Italy, right? The mortality rate in Italy seems to be higher than in China. Uh, governors like uh, Andrew Cuomo in my former state of New York are claiming that even the multi-trillion dollar stimulus package is inadequate. Uh, New York has converted the Javits Center into a uh, temporary hospital, right? Apparently the uh, New York City subways, people are afraid to ride in the subways. It's a controlled small area where viruses might not be able to leave. Viruses might be concentrated in that area. What do you do if you're on a train and someone starts coughing or sneezing? Is it the common cold? Is it the regular flu? Is it the coronavirus? People don't know. People are concerned. I understand the level of concern. I understand the desire of many for immediate action, government action. They're our elected representatives. They should be working for us. This is a time when we're in need. I get it. One man's opinion, all of this economic stimulus is going to fail badly, right? Just as it has failed in countries like Japan, where you have modern monetary theory and pretty much unlimited printing, right? By the way, real estate in Japan today is still not at the level it was 30 years ago in 1990, right? Just do the math, right? The stimulus is going to fail just like it's failed in the past in countries like Zimbabwe, just like it's failing right now in Venezuela. By the way, there's talk in the United States of the U.S. coming up with its own digital currency, as if the fact that the currency changes form so that it's digital is not going to change the fact that the currency would still be a fiat currency whose supply is subject to the whims of politicians. Right? Well, understand in Venezuela, they have a state-issued digital currency hasn't helped. So what I want to do is in the comment section of this video, let's use the interactivity of YouTube. In the comment section of this video, if you can cite a situation where a country has stimulated their way out of 
an economic abyss. Right? A country has come up with right the equivalent of in today's money more than a trillion dollars, two trillion dollars, two point five trillion, according to some reports. And by throwing out that money, stimulating the economy, right? By having huge jet debt jubilees, uh, just saying to borrowers, hey, you no longer owe this money, that countries have been able to successfully transition out of recessions and depressions, then please, I invite you to leave that information in the comments section of this video. Right? I will just say I believe there will be no V-shaped recovery. There's going to be an L-shaped non-recovery. We'll eventually come to grips with the fact that economically, we're back in the 1970s. Right? Younger people than me might not remember a time when U.S. bonds carried 15% interest rates. Right? We're going to have inflation because we're printing more money now while having relatively, in the short term, the same amount of goods and services. Right? Moreover, technology is deflationary. I can tell you from first-hand experience that the cost of a long-distance telephone call today costs far less than it did in 1982. Obviously, Uber costs less today in general than taking taxis. I'm guessing when driverless cars roll out, we'll realize that the operation costs of operating a driverless car will probably be less than the costs of having a chauffeur drive you around town. Right? Technology is deflationary. We're printing more money. Right? I'm expecting this to end badly as people realize that the dollar at a certain point is going to start to lose value. Right? Let me also say too that pensions are suffering. Right? Pension funds. They have political and community leaders trying to beat the S&P 500. The projections, their internal projections, are for imaginary 7% rate of returns. Um, most pension funds are going to have to come clean and they're going to have to tell their beneficiaries that they won't be able to deliver on the promises made to them. Right? CalPERS, one of the biggest pension funds in the United States, has already announced that it has lost more than $60 billion since this market crash. Right? For the record, I'm here in California. From time to time, I speak with people expecting um, payouts from their pension funds. Right? My... Um, brother-in-law is a firefighter, for example, and he fully expects to get paid from his pension fund, right? I'm just telling you that the expectations far outrun the reality. Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad from Rich Dad Poor Dad, has a book out right now called Who Stole My Pension? I think if you're relying on receiving a certain amount, from your defined benefit plan. You should contact the plan, you should look at the assumptions underlying the plan, figure out their holdings. They're probably underfunded by more than 10%. In some states, Illinois for example, I believe you'll be lucky to get 25% 
of the expected return from your pension. Real estate is going to crash, right? As I've said, we already have case studies, right? Real estate in Japan is still not where it was in 1990. Understand, real estate is a leveraged market, right? It's credit fueled. People have mortgages. When the value of the property starts to dip below the mortgage loan value, you're going to have a lot of people get out of their properties, right? Many people with second homes already have had to sell them to meet margin calls and credit obligations, right? Further, as interest rates skyrocket, and don't kid yourself, there's going to be a day when the ability of the Federal Reserve to manipulate interest rates, to suppress them, when that falls apart, right? Understand, it has in the past. Just look at the late 70s and the early 80s, right? As interest rates skyrocket, the idea of owning an expensive mortgage is not going to resonate with many potential buyers. Let me also say, too, that the idea of paying a premium to be in a certain neighborhood, to be close to your friends, your social circle, is going to change. Right? Because of 5G, because of increasing bandwidth, we're going to increasingly be able to hang out with our friends virtually, to be in a virtual neighborhood, right? That might actually lessen the need to be in a neighborhood close to work, for example, right? Your ability to work remotely will greatly increase in the coming years, right? Many people well, let's just say I expect that increased capability to hit real estate prices in a big way. So to sum up, I believe what the politicians are telling us is just propaganda during an election year to help them keep power. Right? They'll tell you what you want to hear. Many people, I'm sure, think that the economy is going to bounce back, that we're having a bad, oh, three weeks, and that the housing market's going to bounce back, credit's going to be free, and uh, these politicians have everything figured out and stuff like that. Uh, the truth is very different. Moments ago, I was hearing from a friend how um, if you own a house and owe money on a mortgage that current legislation might enable you to skip payments and stuff like that. Understand, mortgage lending doesn't operate in a vacuum. Someone's liability is actually somebody else's asset. So if banks can't collect mortgage payments from homeowners, how do you expect to get your savings? out of the bank. If you go into a bank and you say, hey, you know what, I'll just take out a few thousand dollars. Give me three thousand dollars. Right? I need to pay some credit card bills. I need to stock up on toilet paper and stuff like that. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be forced to live at home. Right? Your bank might look at their bottom line. They have to keep a capital base. They might realize that they didn't get the money from homeowners. They didn't get the mortgage payments because some politician someplace who doesn't see the big picture might have passed some good sounding legislation that enabled the homeowner to skip the mortgage payment. So understand, that's going to hit people who have money in banks. Understand, the precedent has already been established in some places like Cyprus of bail-ins, where they suddenly announce to you that, guess what, the banking system, the country, needs part of your deposit. And, of course, you're an unsecured creditor of the bank. 
So they might tell you, hey, thanks for banking with us. We're keeping X percent, 20 percent of the money you have with us. If you had privately earmarked that money to pay for your kid's college education, let's say, you know, you didn't set up a 529, you're doing it this way, or to pay for some anniversary party for you and your wife, or to take out your parents to, you know, celebrate their anniversary, or Uncle Joe's birthday, whatever the reason. You might not be able to do that. So these are hard times. You know, I'll just say this. Um, people like to talk to me about the New Deal. My father, an immigrant, as am I, was a huge fan of FDR. Right? Understand, I was raised in a very progressive household. My dad was a social worker. Right? You know, I want people to compare and contrast FDR's handling of the Great Depression with Warren G. Harding's handling of the Depression at the beginning of what would later be called the Roaring Twenties. Right? Understand there are many academics. Thomas Sowell comes to mind who believe that FDR's interventionist approach prolonged the Great Depression. Right? Just ask yourself. Right now, you know technology is disintermediating a lot of services. It's streamlining services. Right? If you took Uber or Lyft and you found it to be much more convenient than taxis, is the taxi industry an outfit you want getting a subsidy from your government right now? Paid for by you down the road or your kids. Right? Just understand, we're subsidizing everything right now. Even businesses that are going out of business. Right? So, this would be like subsidizing the horse and buggy industry right now. You need to ask yourself, which would make us better off? Printing a lot of money, debasing the currency and your savings, right? Or realizing that some companies made mistakes, that we have a bankruptcy system already in place to handle corporate reorganizations. Right? Understand, the status quo right now is going to have you picking up the tab for airlines that paid themselves, right, that bought their own shares that converted equity to debt to make their books look better than they were. Right, folks? The words moral hazard come to mind. The stimulus is going to be as ineffective as the years of stimulus in Japan. By the way, I want people to look at the level of Japanese debt Right? It's several times GDP. Why would we here in the United States want to follow that blueprint? Let me also say this too. I know the politicians want you to believe that this is a coronavirus-caused economic disaster. Just ask yourself, which came first? Negatively yielding sovereign bonds or the coronavirus. Right, folks? The economy had problems. You had people like Tim Draper who took their money out of the market before the coronavirus 
ever became publicly known because he saw that market valuations were extreme. They were 99 percentile. Right? So make no mistake, we've been economically rotting for quite some time. The coronavirus was just the pin that popped a bubble that was overdue to pop. Look at the ISM index. We were at the end of the business cycle. Our debt load was preposterous. Weren't we more than $2 trillion in debt before the coronavirus? Let me also ask a dumb question. I thought that we had unemployment insurance. I thought that we already had a setup in place, just like we have a bankruptcy system. We already had a setup in place to take care of displaced workers. Didn't we? I have a friend who's an entrepreneur. He was over here the other day talking about how he had to let a lot of people go and stuff like that. Right? Is now the time to come up with additional programs at a time where they're already watering down the value of the currency? So, let's talk about things that might change, right? Maybe, it's a long shot, but maybe artificial intelligence will help us get out of this mess, right? Maybe the idea that you could have AI flip burgers, reduce the costs of food, at restaurants so that more people can afford the food. Maybe the idea of autonomous vehicles reducing the cost of travel, right? Enabling people to get lifts places without having to pay for a full-time driver or without having to pay for parking in a very expensive place like San Francisco or New York because your car theoretically might be able to drive itself around while you're shopping at the mall. Maybe you won't have to pay that $30 parking fee. Maybe that'll help people make ends meet. Right? The other hope I see is the emergence of Bitcoin. altcoins with limited supply, right? The separation of money from state control, money that crosses borders, that doesn't require a conversion, that would enable you to use Bitcoin in Germany, England, the United States, Venezuela, right? There's a reason why a cryptocurrency, Dash, as well as Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash are all doing far better in Venezuela than Venezuela's state-issued digital currency, the Petro. Let me just close by saying what you're hearing to me from the politicians is propaganda. If you're expecting a V-shaped recovery, you're kidding yourself as much as the people who are expecting to get a hundred cents on the dollar of the pension benefits they've been promised. Right? These are hard times. Let's not kid ourselves. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.